most people don't understand the relationship between central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. We're told all the time that they're two completely different things. But here's the thing. My journey, I had obstructive sleep apnea. And applying these principles to people with central sleep apnea, like this person here, I'll talk about them in a moment, they have great success. Sleeping better, waking up, more energy. But wait, I'm always talking about obstructive. How is someone with central having any success? Well, let's talk about thermostats. There's a breathing thermostat in your brainstem, and there's different problems with it with obstructive versus central sleep apnea, but they're very similar because they can both share this analogy and also physiologically, that's how it works out. So obstructive sleep apnea, yes, you have some sort of anatomical narrowing, but over time, that makes your breathing thermostat more sensitive. So when there's small changes to your physiology and CO2 levels, you'll over respond by breathing faster. And that will actually cause your airway to collapse, that fast inhale. Now with central sleep apnea, instead of over responding, you're just not responding. Your thermostat is off, not working at all. So when you use these breathing techniques, they will retrain, resensitize the thermostat for obstructive sleep apnea, and they will reboot the thermostat for central sleep apnea. So for both, Breathing exercises are very beneficial. Slow breathing exercises like box breathing or like five in, five pause, five out, five pause, and just repeat that. So either way, it can be beneficial in supporting good natural breathing at night. Follow for more sleep apnea insights and then get the free guide at apneareset.com.